video games. They come with a plethora of characters throughout their history. Some are so good that they leave a godlike impression on us while others are pretty decent. But then there come the worst of the bunch. Characters that we wish the video game companies have never created to begin with. That's right, I'm talking about the abysmal characters that will raise your rage meter to the brink of explosion and make us just want to enter the gaming world and kill them with our own hands. This is Grief C Productions, and I will be listing my top 10 personal hated characters I have encountered in video games. For the sake of this list, however, I will be excluding the most overrated characters that are on everyone's minds. Jasper Bat Jr., Porky Minch, Vladimir Makarov, and Count V-Jokes. It's Vega. Why do I even bother? Also, keep in mind that this is my personal list, so if you're going to leave a comment, please be constructive about it. It's a pity that I have to waste my rage that I have built up for a certain incubator, but my list says otherwise. Without further ado, grab those rocket launchers because we are going on a character hunt. Now you're feeling it! That's your life losing all meaning! You've got nothing left except this fight! Now I know you'll put all you have into this! You're gonna fucking pay! Warning! Due to the lack of high quality footage, the video footage shown for this entry was recorded from an external device. Watch at your own risk. You know, I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm a fan of SpongeBob SquarePants ever since my childhood and it's overall a decent cartoon. Other than the atrocious episodes starting from season 4 but that's besides the point. There is one character from the series that tends to get on my nerves and he comes straight from a video game. Seymour Scales. How should I put this? Seymour is probably one of the biggest and cheapest scammers I have met in video game history. Basically, when Spongebob fails his last driving test, Seymour visits the boating school and takes advantage of Spongebob's failure by offering a ridiculous driving course that involves destruction derbies and races, promising to officially give Spongebob what he wants most of his life, his driving license. Okay, at this point, you probably already know that there's something wrong with this course, but you'll be having so much fun smashing that you'll likely won't care until the final test, and that's when Seymour pulls off his scam. It is my great honor to present SpongeBob SquarePants, fair citizen of Bikini Bottom, with his very own license to drive. But I'm afraid it's not real. <laughs> I trusted you! You can't catch me! So long, sucker! Not to mention he can be really cheap in the final chase. That's all I have to say about Seymour. He's nothing but a greedy and backstabbing scammer. Now whenever Seymour is an opponent during a derby, I take him out first. Get back here! You ain't nothing! I know I can kick your ass! You've got nothing left except this fight. Now I know you'll put all you have into this. You're gonna fucking pay! Now we get into the Mario series. Now which character is on my mind? Toad? Nope. Birdo? Nope. Bowser Jr.? Closer, but nope. Actually, the character I chose is similar to Bowser Jr. in every aspect, but is far more annoying. That character is Junior Troopa from Paper Mario. This kid, I swear, is a very tenacious bastard that doesn't know when to quit. Seriously. He has no connection to the main story and only wants to dish out Mario just because he accidentally trespassed on his playground. Gee, talk about the bully on the block. At first, I found him a decent character, but after my third encounter with this kid, I was really starting to get annoyed, especially since I have to fight him a total of six times. I really hate this kid for his tenacity. Never before had I encountered a tenacious character that never quits. Well, then there's Zoggy, but at least he's more entertaining with his dialogue. The only thing this kid is getting is E for effort, and A for annoyance. You've got nothing left except this fight. Now I know you'll put all you have into this. You're gonna fucking pay! I actually have mixed feelings for this next entry. I don't really hate this character a lot as the others, but at the same time, she gets on my nerves. And yes, the next entry is from a Toho game. And that character is Kilisame Maisa. 
This character, I swear, is the biggest mindfuck of the entire franchise, mainly because of her personality and overall character alone. Yes, I'm aware that she's second banana to Reimu, and probably the most like playable character, and I can agree with that. In fact, I sometimes play as Marisa on occasion, but my issue with Marisa is not her playability, but her background personality to begin with. She is sometimes portrayed as either a smug smartass or an intolerable dumbass. An example of which is shown in Imperishable Night, where she just attacks her friend Reimu for no reason other than false accusation and obliviousness. But the worst about her comes from her doujinshi and fan works, where it is shown that Marisa is a book thief and a spell card ripoff artist. That's right, she has ripped off spells such as Pacholi's non-directional laser and Marisa's so-called trademarked Master Spark. Now where have I seen that before? Overall, those traits are why I find Marisa so annoying. And although I find Marisa fun to play sometimes, those actions don't excuse her from this list. I'm done my rant about her, so let's move on. Haunting childhood memories. Ah, the Star Fox series is perhaps one of my favorite series created by Nintendo with its high action and adrenaline pumping chaos. But like most series, Star Fox has its own fair share of hated characters, ranging from Slippy and his annoying voice. <laughs> to the goddamn awful backstabber known as Pigma. However, seeing as Pigma is already claimed by you know who, my hated character in this series is Andrew Oikini for good reasons. First off, he's one of the few undeveloped characters in the franchise next to Cat and Bill. But unlike these two, Andrew is as annoying as hell. The only thing we get out of him is that he's a member of Star Wolf and is Andros' supposed successor. But what's so great about Andrew? All he does is blab on about being the next Andros when in reality, he's just a coward and a crybaby. He's not really much of a threat either, even when commanding his own rebellion army. In fact, he's hardly worth talking about anymore. He's annoying and he's just a pointless Andros wannabe. I am the one and only true heir to the great Emperor Andros! The new Emperor! Andrew Oikini! I hope that Aproid dealt the death blow to this bastard. I had played very few Pokemon games throughout my life. The reason is classified, but I have played the spin-offs though. Most notably, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Overall, I was having fun, exploring dungeons, beating up enemies, doing side quests, just like any other RPG. And this game has done a good job portraying the Pokemon as interesting characters. Except one that is... Dusnor. Two major problems I have with this character. He is very cliched and pulls off the same cliches like you would expect from an anime. Not only that, he is one of the first video game characters I actually hated in my younger days. Basically, when you meet Dusnor for the first time, he says he's trying to capture Grovile because he has been stealing time gears all over the land. So when you gain his trust and finally capture Grovile, THIS HAPPENS! Dusnor drags you and your partner into the distant future, along with Grovile, and then proceeds to kill you! It turns out that Dusnor is a sinister advocate of Primal Dialga, who had gone mad due to the destruction of time, and his goal was simply to stop you and Grovile from altering the Doom timeline. It can't get any cliché than that, right? So when the trio escape and finally return to their present, they collect the remaining time gears and set out for the hidden land to stop time's destruction, only to get ambushed by Dusnor and the Sableye squad. It's here that my rage for Dusnor was at his peak, because he was dead serious of trying to kill you. So when I finally beat him, I was so relieved. Not only was Dusnor cliched, but he really set my rage up for something I didn't expect from a kid-friendly franchise. 
I was young then, but even today, I still feel rage for this character. 